Okay, it's that coming with it. We just have it quite a low... The time you're likely to need to use your flash is in a low light situation like this. Dinner with friends, party, on holiday, something or other. You've got to take a picture. Point your camera at the subject and your little on-camera flash will probably pop up automatically because the camera knows it's quite dark. Let me take a picture of Robin with the on-camera flash to show you the kind of thing it will do. It's quite a nice picture. The light's really, really harsh. She's kind of like very, very bright and there's a strong shadow on the wall behind her, which is okay, but it's not brilliant, is it? The reason this happens is because the light source, this little tiny flash tube here, is very, very small and the light it produces is like a jet of water which flies out and smacks straight into Robin. And it causes a shadow up the wall. Another way of describing it would be like a torch, shining a torch at somebody. When you go to take a flash picture, your camera actually produces two flashes. One is a low power flash, which bounces off the subject, comes up the lens, the camera measures it, works out the exposure. It tells your flash what it needs it to do, and then you press the button, the shutter opens, the flash fires, the shutter closes, and you've caught a picture. Now this opening and closing of the shutter is very, very quick. Usually it's a 60th of a second by default. You can go into manual and change it, but don't go there for the minute if you're just beginning with flash. Because it's only a 60th of a second, which is a very short amount of time, there's not enough time for the available light, what you can see with your, with your eyes in the room, to affect the picture in any way. It is purely lit with the flash, and that can cause problems in this harshness. So the best thing to do is get yourself a dedicated flash gun, like this one here. Dedicated means it's dedicated to your camera. You've got to buy the right one for your camera. You can't just go out and buy any old thing you like because it won't work. So you click it in place, the dedicated gun talks to your camera through the connections in the hot shoe. Let me take that picture of Robin again. Turn the flash on. Here we go. Point that at Rob. No, it's going to be grey. Grey pink. There we go. Like a lilac grey. Now look, the light on Robin is much, much nicer straight away. Because this is a very slightly larger flash source, it's going to make a slightly bigger kind of area that the light's coming from, which makes the picture better. But the shadow has got worse. That's because the distance between the flash and the lens is greater. So it's shining in at an angle and it's throwing a larger shadow. The first thing you could do would be to fit a diffuser, one of these little translucent things. They usually come free as standard with a dedicated flash and it just slots on the front like that. That's all there is to it. This is like taking your garden hose and selecting the sprinkler setting. The jet of light is coming out and hitting this translucent plastic and shattering into all sorts of directions, which gives you a much softer, nicer light. And straight away you can see the light on Rob's face is much better, the shiny, shiny bright bits have gone. The shadow is much, much softer, it hasn't got such a black hard edge to it. The light on Robin herself looks much, much nicer too. It's a softer, more wrap-aroundy kind of a light. The best thing you can do in a situation like this is actually take the diffuser right off and bounce the light. I'm going to bounce it off the ceiling, so I can press the little catch point the flash straight up in the air like that. Nearly all dedicated flash guns will have an extra little diffuser in here too. It's a wide angle diffuser. That, this little thing I'm dropping down shatters the light out to the sides a bit. And this little card which hides in the back there, which is part of the flash gun, that will reflect a little bit of light forwards at the subject. So let's take the Robin shot one more time. Very stylish. But look, isn't that nice light? There is no shadow behind her at all. That's because the light is hitting the ceiling and it's spreading out. Then it's reflecting back down. It's like a very fine misty rain and it's coming down behind Robin as well as in front of her. So there is no shadow behind her at all. When you've got a bounce light, be careful as to what colour you're bouncing it off. For example, you could bounce it off the wall. I could, there was a wall there, I could bounce it off that. But if that wall was green, I'd get green light coming back again and Rob would look like she's feeling very ill.
If you have a green yeah, ceiling and a white wall, matching. go for the wall, not the yeah. ceiling, because the same thing will happen. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be a little bit careful with that. You can usually correct those colour casts afterwards in the computer, but it makes life a lot easier if you can get it the right colour in the first place. Now, just looking back at that last shot of Rob, it's very, very nice. However, I'd say it's just a little tad dark. I can brighten that up fairly easily by pressing the selector here. You've got, you've got power control. If I press that selector and dial it up a bit, I'm going to go to plus one. That's going to double the amount of brightness. Just put my reflector and bounce back as it was because I was fiddling. Take that shot again. Yeah. There we go. Look, that's just brightened the shot up that little bit and made it that little bit nicer and brighter. If you have a similar problem with your on-camera flash, you can tell the camera what to do with that too. By pressing the little button here, which pops the flash up and turning, it depends on the make of your camera because everything's different. On this one, I rotate the wheel at the back, I think it is. There we go. You can tell the flash to be brighter or darker. It's just the same as with the dedicated. Now, flash has a limit to how far it can reach. In a room like this, it's great. But imagine you're at a concert and you want to photograph somebody up on stage. You see the flashes going off around Wembley Stadium all the time when you see it on telly. The flash can't possibly cover that distance. No matter how powerful a flash gun you buy, it won't reach across Wembley Stadium. <clears throat> you're much better off to turn the flash off and increase your ISO. But this little film's about flash, so I'm not going into that right now. In this kind of situation, with friends having dinner, bouncing your flash off the wall or the ceiling or something like that is definitely the best bet. In these circumstances, these techniques I've just shown you will work really, really well. You'll get some great pictures of your family and friends. <laughs>